be blessed by the divine dear friends i would like to share some important information interesting information about the bad eagle eagle never fears adversity it is a majestic courageous confident and fearless bird when all the other birds fly fast to reach their nest in fear of rain you know what the eagle does it just flies above the cloud and thus avoids rain what a clever bird it is but there it is said eagle lives for more than 70 years of course it has a setback at at its age of 40 that is it, its beak gets bent yeah live or die situation you know what it just it struggles hard to just come out of that problem and happily lives for another 30 or more years see what a fearless and courageous bird it is we human beings need to learn a lot from this eagle isn't it dear friends fear is an emotion or instinct you can say Act, always it is attributed to negativity even though at some times it is said to be positive when it helps to strive in striving a life yet what is fear and how we are going to solve it this is that we need to know these this information through vedadriya we will know all these things on the topic fear not and the speaker today is professor m viswalingam before handing over the mic to professor m viswalingam i would like to introduce professor viswalingam welcome professor viswalingam sir professor viswalingam he is into sky yoga for more than 25 years he is instrumental in setting up of vm sky center at singapore and today vm sky center is functioning in a new its own place and he is the president and also he is the nominated president of sky development society singapore he is taking classes for vision to we are happy to welcome such a wonderful person to our center today welcome professor Mr. Willingham, sir, the well, floor is yours. Call your number one. Uh, good evening, to all of you. Uh, I I don't seem to get my picture on the video here. Probably if J K Professor J K Parvi can help. Yes. Underneath the flyer, there is one column. Do you want to change? You just write yes, and then you just uh, you can share your screen, sir. Underneath oh. that flyer. Share yes, screen. One. Okay, okay, okay. Understand. Okay, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Yes. Let's come. The sound is there for you. Ah, uh, it is. Uh, I am able to see it, sir. I think everybody will be able to see it. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm still uh, not so good with uh, all these IT things. Eh? Uh, pardon me for that. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, Senior Professor S. P. Balaya and uh, his team. And I'm uh, very happy to see the catchy flyer. 
and thanks to the advertising team. And uh, thank you, Professor G.K. Bharati uh, for introducing me. Let us start. Today's topic is fear not. First, let me invoke Swamiji's blessing. Sir, excuse me, your screen is not moving. It is just showing the... What can I do? That is, you need to open your PowerPoint. I think you are not at open. Uh, I'm, I'm not showing PowerPoint. I'm just... Uh, you, can just you see... Showing the screen, that's all? Uh, that's all, yes. Okay. Will, will this do? Uh, that screen is visible. Some okay. yellow floor and... Uh, Okay, okay. Oh, the, the people, I think okay. 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 Thank okay. you very much. Okay, let's uh, let me invoke uh, Swamiji uh, for this uh, session so that uh, he'll be able to participate with us once all of them. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the topic today is fear not. Fear. Right. Uh, to go into it further, I'm actually going to split this into three segments. One is physical, and one is psychological, and one is spiritual. Right? Okay. First, starting with physical. You you are at the park. You are at the park, and uh, all of a sudden, a big dog, maybe four and a half feet to five feet tall, black, you no know, rotom rushing at you. Uh, what will happen? I think some of you might have experienced uh, such an environment in your life before. So what actually happened is uh, uh, there is a, a small organ inside your brain, middle of the brain, uh, amygdala, which starts to go into motion, action. So when this happens, stress hormones particularly cortisol and adrenaline are secreted. So during this time, your uh, nervous system is activated and starts to function. Now, fear response is in motion. So what actually happens is your blood pressure rises, heart rate goes up, Breathing also accelerate. And during this time, the blood is diverted, diverted from the other sections of the body to your limbs, ready to for you to either to fight or flee the scene. And not only that, not only that, when this Amygdala work starts moving, some part of your brain works and some of the part of the brain goes slows down. So unfortunately, what happens is our frontal cerebral node uh, will be impaired. So our reasoning will be dull. Uh, judgment will be foggy. Decision making and judgment will be confused. So this is the setback of fear. So what will be the outcome? So you either, you've seen these, huh? probably people screaming, yeah? people will scream, put their hands up, you know, in exasperation. So there are two aspects of fear. One is reaction to fear, which I've just discussed. And the other one is phobia. You have seen that, uh, uh, many a time, uh, people just will go to the wash, bas wash basin, uh, uh, cleaning their hands, you know, and also uh, avoiding water, avoiding spiders, scared of, frightened of cockroaches, you know, they will practically scream. Well, these are actually based on uh, past experiences which are instilled into our karmic imprints and it comes out. So there's one more thing, uh, which we call staged fear. So 
I think a number of you would have uh, gone uh, in the roller coasters, uh, tunnels, haunted houses. So here, we want to go again and again. You have seen when people sitting on the roller coasters, eh, uh, they scream, they raise their hands up. They are in fear actually. So, but this is uh, willingly done. So what happens during this time is uh, the brain secretes dopamine. This is a pleasure creating uh, hormone. And uh, you wanted to do it again and do it again and do it again. And despite my fear. So let us move into the second segment, briefly look at what psychology says about fear. Fear is innate and is also acquired. Innate means uh, you're frightened of snakes, uh, death fear, fear of going into the tunnels. This could have been passed uh, through karmic or, or genetic imprints from your father's parents or forefathers. So there is one which is acquired and it is the conditioned fear, conditioned fear. So negative happenings in the past is responsible for such behavior, written by a dog. So whenever you see a dog, your past imprints comes to flash and you become frightened. Uh, same, you know, if you are walking by and you fall into a pond, then the fear of water comes upon every time you go near a pond. So here, what happens is uh, our everyday life, everyday life uh, is actually built up with negative influences. Uh, that's the reason why the acquired fear is predominant in number of people. You have seen, don't do that, don't climb here, don't fall down. I will briefly tell you uh, my personal experience with my uh, grandson. Uh, when he was crawling, yeah? when he was crawling, when he sees an ant, he will say, Adi, Adi, you know, bit. Uh, then I will tell him, oh, never mind, don't beat that fella, let, let him be. Even if he sees a big hand, he will say, Adi. Adi. So he has grown up, now he's almost uh, one and a half years old. Now we see something crawling towards him, he said, I'm scared. I'm scared. What has happened? So you see, I think the environment moves the person. So this is the reason why I'm telling you this could have been uh, happening to you in your house. So our home environment is full of negativity. If he climbs the stairs, you say, hey, don't fall down. Uh, instead of guiding him, you say, don't fall down. If you walk towards uh, a desk, hey, be careful. Don't hit your head against the desk. So this is the kind of environment we are in. Please note, uh, dear brothers and sisters, uh, we have to come out of it so that our next generation uh, can be more brave. Huh? So what psychology says about getting rid of these uh, fears? There are two processes. One is acclimatization and the other one is flooding. So psychology says face fear. You face fear. In flooding, what happens? Let's say you're frightened of uh, spiders, they will bring you uh, uh, into a room or where there are spiders, not crawling about, you know, in, maybe in boxes, glass panels and all that. Uh, to, to get rid of the fear of spiders uh, for you. Uh, but this process is a bit dangerous because uh, you are introducing something you are very proud, very worried about and frightened. So this process has to be guided. Then the other one is acclimatization. Let's say you fall into a, a pool and you're afraid of water or walking by uh, near the water. 
So what happens uh, in psychology is uh, they will introduce the concept of water uh, to you, then probably take you uh, to a swimming pool, tell you, hey, it's harmless, probably take you to a pond, then further down, uh, they might take you to a lake or to the sea to get it over here. Uh, so this is what uh, is offered in psychology, but uh, uh, I, I don't think so, uh, that uh, it will totally remove your fear. So uh, let me go into the next segment, uh, which is spiritual. Uh, Swamiji says the cause of all the problems in the world is due to two, three things. One is fear, fear, please note fear. The second is poverty. And also the third one would be people are in search of God. And they don't know where its God is, huh? so they are searching. So these are the cause of all the problems. So let us trace the events after the trigger. Huh? Let us trace the event. So when the fear is triggered in the brain, actually it is the mind which is uh, taking the fear into account. So what actually is captured is, is the external stimuli. So we have these five senses. We see oh, the dog is running towards you. Then we hear it's barking and it is furious. Then we also smell, taste, you know, these are the sensory perception. The other one is the mind also reacts to the danger. Mind reacts to danger. So now uh, the whole occurrence is actually dependent on what we think and the main thought process is the mind. So we have to know briefly, yeah, briefly, what the mind does. It perceives and it reacts. It perceives and it reacts. So then what is this mind? Uh, probably the, the participants here who are gathered, uh, who are meditators probably uh, would know uh, that mind is something, is a wave which cannot be seen. Huh? Uh, Swamiji gives a very clear definition. Nobody has given such a definition before. It's the extension of your life force. So we have the mind here. Then you have the life force. Two important things many of us are not aware, aware of. Huh? We buy a grinder. Now we look at the instruction manual. Okay, what are the speeds it has to be operated? What are the uh, conditions? Whether it should be dry, wet, and what's the quantity? We read through. Huh? Anything we buy, we look at the manual. We are living. Do we read our manual? And friends, science has really not gone into the realm of, realm of uh, uh, the mind and life force because uh, it's a way. Science always uh, relies on things which can be measured, seen. So it is a wave and we cannot see it. So science has a problem here. So probably, you know, Machi says when science collaborates and joins hand with uh, the spiritualism, uh, we might be able to come to an understanding of how we are living, what is causing us to live, how we are protected and all that. So life force in essence is spinning very fast. I mean, spinning through all of our body with the focal point or muladhara, muladhara, meditators will know it. And Maharaji says, life force is the extension 
no, sorry, mind is the extension of your life force. So your mind, which is also a wave, spreads all through your body. And what we coined the term point for this is biomagnetism. Many of you might have heard this. So it's working through our senses. When we see, we use biomagnetism. When we smell, we use biomagnetism. When we hear, we use biomagnetism. So our bodily function entirely depends on this biomagnetism, which we have to know. Without this knowledge, uh, I would say that uh, uh, we are actually living in the blindness. Huh? Margrethe says, uh, everyone born in this world have to meditate. Uh, but if it's not happening, I think probably, you know, the world is catching up with meditation. So our Siddhas have identified and uh, merged the mind with the life form. How they did this? Through meditation. So our mind is outside, focusing on the external objects. You get attached to a lot of things, you know. So the birthplace is its life form. So what they have done is, as what you have done in the after meditation earlier, uh, we close our eyes and look here, focusing our mind here, mind there, eh? focusing our mind here. Then over time, uh, you'll be able to merge your mind into the life form. Huh? Then, depending on the frequencies, uh, you'll be go, able to go deeper, uh, lower to lower frequency, and probably, you know, you'll be able to see what causes the life force to spin. Something must be driving uh, the life force for it to spin. So you will come to a stage where it is a static state, uh, which controls the whole universal function. Uh, that is what uh, is please, you know, in uh, what you call uh, spiritualism. So now, uh, having known what is life force and what is mind, and mind is responsible for all of the actions. And if a fear response happens, so, Meditators, you know, if you are meditating, your frontal lobe and your whole brain as a whole is active all the time. So in, in a situation of distress, distress, fear, okay, can it be anything? Eh? You will be able to remain in awareness, focused, to understand the situation and decide what has to be done. So you move from excited stage where your reasoning is impact to a stage of awareness where you will be able to decide what is the next cause of my action. So from excitement to awareness. So meditation offers you such a thing. So I would believe and I would say that, you know, uh, this is the the only way available huh? uh, to come out of fear totally. I'm not frightened most of the time. I will relate to you a, a, an incident which happened in my life a couple of years back. Uh, I was just walking out of the house uh, one day. Then I saw my neighbor's dog, black, white dog, I think around four and a half feet tall, huh? uh, rushing towards me. So normally the dog, my neighbor's dog is always unleashed and the gates are all the time closed. Unfortunately, the day the gate was opened, the dog, dog was rushing towards me. So I was taken aback for a while. You know, it's a normal response. Huh? So I told myself, huh? I looked at the dog into the eyes and I told the dog, you know, just speaking, you know, I'm not going to harm you. I'm your friend. I'm not a threat. And likewise, I would wish that you don't harm me. You'd be surprised. Huh? It worked. The rushing dog came, circled around me, and I was able to pet the dog. It's a tall fellow. Huh? So at that moment, then my neighbor rushed out. Uh, 
clearing that, you know, uh, I would be injured. So I told the neighbor, okay, it's okay, it's a family time. So this is my personal experience, personal experience. So uh, meditators will be able to determine the situations they are in and uh, will be able to come out of all the circumstances of fear, not even fear, anything which is presented to you, uh, you will be able to overcome. Vivekananda is said this. I just uh, conclude this with this uh, message. If you know yourself, the power within you, if you know yourself and the power within you, even a snake bite will not do anything to you if you are able to deny the poison. This is Thank you.